US, Japan and South Korea agree to expand security ties at summit amid China, North Korea worries. President Joe Biden, along with the leaders of Japan and South Korea, concluded a historic summit at Camp David, the US presidential retreat. The leaders discussed expanding security and economic ties among the allies, focusing on dealing with rising tensions with China and North Korea. The agreements reached include the establishment of a communications hotline to address threats. The leaders emphasized the importance of trilateral security cooperation to promote peace and stability in the region. While the summit wasn't explicitly about China, the leaders expressed concerns about China's dangerous and aggressive actions in the South China Sea and their opposition to unilateral attempts to change the status quo in the Indo-Pacific waters. One of the key outcomes was a new duty to consult security pledge, committing the US, Japan, and South Korea to consult and share information in the event of security crises in the Pacific. This pledge acknowledges their interconnected security environments, the summit aimed to strengthen security and economic cooperation between Japan and South Korea, two nations with complex historical differences. Despite the challenges, the leaders are focused on shared security concerns related to North Korea and China. The gathering aimed to further solidify their relationship, although potential future leadership changes in any of the countries could pose challenges to the progress made. The summit at Camp David, with its historical significance, provided a platform for the leaders to discuss these critical matters and foster cooperation. US, Japan and South Korea condemn dangerous and aggressive actions by China. During a summit at Camp David, the United States, Japan, and South Korea issued a joint statement condemning China's dangerous and aggressive actions in the South China Sea. The statement reflected heightened concern about China's behavior and aimed to strengthen coordination among the three nations. The joint statement included commitments to consult and coordinate responses during crises, hold annual trilateral military training exercises, share real-time information about North Korean missile launches, and conduct trilateral summits regularly. The leaders also addressed Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Expressing support for Ukraine and maintaining coordinated sanctions against Russia while aiming to reduce dependence on Russian energy, the notable aspect of the statement was its strong language regarding China's actions in the South China Sea, indicating a united front against Beijing's territorial claims and unilateral actions. This stance is likely to trigger a response from China, which holds significant economic ties with both Japan and South Korea. U.S. sanctions Russian operatives accused in the poisoning of Putin critic Alexei Navalny. The U.S. has imposed sanctions and visa restrictions on four Russian intelligence operatives allegedly involved in the 2020 poisoning of Alexei Navalny, a prominent critic of President Vladimir Putin. The individuals, identified as Alexei Alexandrov, Konstantin Kudryavtsev, Ivan Osipov, and Vladimir Panyev, are operatives of the Federal Security Services, FSB, and the FSB's Criminalistics Institute, which reportedly deals with poisons. Navalny fell seriously ill in August 2020 after being poisoned with the nerve agent Novichok. He was treated in Germany and later imprisoned upon his return to Russia. The US government, among others, believes the FSB officers were responsible for the poisoning. These sanctions were issued under the Magnitsky Act, which targets individuals involved in gross human rights violations, including extrajudicial killings and torture. The sanctions freeze their U.S. assets and prohibit them from conducting transactions with U.S. entities. Additionally, the State Department has banned them and their families from entering the U.S. Navalny, a prominent opposition figure in Russia, had previously campaigned against Putin and faced various forms of harassment and detention for his activism. Russia bans entry to Moldovan officials after diplomatic expulsions. Russia has announced a ban on the entry of several Moldovan officials in response to Moldova's decision to expel 22 Russian diplomats. The move exacerbates already strained relations between the two countries. The expulsion of the Russian diplomats came amid tensions caused by Russia's involvement in Ukraine's conflict. Moldova's pro-European president, Maya Sandu, criticized Russia's actions and accused Moscow of attempting to destabilize her country. The Russian foreign ministry called Moldova's decision unfriendly and stated that it further damages their already troubled relationship. While the specific Moldovan officials affected by the entry ban were not identified, reports suggest that around 20 officials, including lawmakers from Sandu's ruling party, are impacted. Threat of losing Crimea might force Putin to back down, report. In a leaked Zoom call, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken stated that losing Crimea is a red line for Russian President Vladimir Putin. 
However, the US considers Ukraine's liberation of Crimea to be unrealistic and not a worthwhile objective. Foreign journalists share these doubts, explaining that isolating Crimea would require Ukraine's counteroffensive to advance toward certain key areas, which has been hindered by factors like the destruction of the Kakovka HEP dam and Russian defenses. The article suggests that while Putin claims to protect Russian speakers in other regions, his main focus remains holding on to Crimea. Despite potential threats or negotiations, Putin's long-term goals are unlikely to change as long as he remains in power. Russian general who knew secrets of Putin's palace dies suddenly in prison. Gennady Lopirev, the Russian general who oversaw the construction of Vladimir Putin's opulent Black Sea Palace, has died suddenly in prison at the age of 69. Lopirev, who was imprisoned in 2017 for taking bribes in exchange for lucrative building contracts, was due for parole. He was diagnosed with leukemia on August 14 and died two days later. Lopirev had previously served as a lieutenant general in the Federal Protection Service, FSO, which guards Putin. He played a significant role in overseeing the construction and security of Putin's palace near Galenzik on the Black Sea coast, a lavish complex with various facilities, including a chapel, ice hockey pitch, vineyard, and more. Lopirev's death was attributed to natural causes, although corruption allegations are prevalent in Russia's military, and it's uncommon for high-ranking generals to face prison time for bribery. Latest North Korean missile sparks debate over possible Russian links. The recent testing of North Korea's Wasong-18 intercontinental ballistic missile, ICBM, which uses solid rocket fuel, has led to renewed discussions about possible Russian involvement in North Korea's missile development. A report from the Center for Strategic and International Studies, SIZE, suggests that the Wasong-18's advanced capabilities may be a result of technical cooperation from Russia. Some analysts point to visual similarities between the Wasong-18 and the Russian Topolem ICBM, implying potential collaboration, however, other experts argue that while there are similarities, North Korea's missiles have distinct differences and could have gathered technical data from various sources. Including cyber attacks. The James Martin Center for Nonproliferation Studies, CNS, raised concerns about factual inaccuracies in the size report, challenging claims of Russian assistance. The U.S. intelligence community is said to be closely examining the issue. White House National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan expressed concern about potential missile cooperation between Russia and North Korea but did not confirm the size report's findings. Although there are similarities between North Korean missiles and Russian designs, analysts point out that the Wasong-18 has characteristics that differ from Russian missiles, including guidance systems and missile stages. The roots of North Korea's missile program trace back to Soviet and Russian assistance. But the extent of ongoing collaboration remains debated. Saudi Crown Prince meets Iran's foreign minister as relations thaw. Saudi Arabian Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman held a high-level meeting with Iran's foreign minister Hossein Amr Abdelayan, marking the highest-level talks between the countries since they reconciled in March after years of rivalry. The meeting took place in Jeddah and was followed by an announcement from Amr Abdelayan that the Saudi crown prince had accepted an invitation to visit Tehran. The discussions were described as frank, beneficial, and productive, with both sides expressing agreement on regional security and development. The meeting comes after China played a role in facilitating a rapprochement between the two nations earlier this year. Leading to the resumption of full diplomatic relations, the rivalry between Iran and Saudi Arabia had been a dominant factor in the Middle East, with both countries vying for influence in various regional conflicts. The recent reconciliation signals a shift in approach as both countries seek to address their security and stability concerns in the region. Iran sees improved relations with Saudi Arabia as a way to end its political and economic isolation, while Saudi Arabia has been re-evaluating its ties with the United States and strengthening its relations with China. Additionally, Saudi Arabia has been engaging in discussions with other nations to boost security and stability in the Middle East. Trump wasn't invited to an Atlanta forum. His rivals hope to capitalize. Republican presidential candidates are gathering in Atlanta for a two-day forum called The Gathering, hosted by conservative radio host Eric Erickson. The event aims to provide a platform for candidates to discuss issues beyond former President Donald Trump's legal troubles and recent charges. Notably, Trump has not been invited to the event. Among the attendees are Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, a top rival to Trump for the nomination, and several other lower polling challengers. The event will touch on social issues, artificial intelligence, and economic and military competition with China, 
while the event seeks to focus on other candidates. Trump's presence looms due to recent legal developments. He was indicted for the fourth time in Georgia for allegedly attempting to overturn the 2020 election results through a scheme involving fake electors and harassment of election officials. Trump is set to cast a shadow over the event, despite his absence. The state of Georgia, which was historically a Republican stronghold, has undergone demographic changes, turning it into a competitive swing state. Despite not being an early primary state, Georgia could still play a significant role in the Republican nomination and the general election against President Joe Biden. Zelensky announces powerful things for Ukrainian Independence Day. President Volodymyr Zelensky of Ukraine has announced plans to strengthen the country by Independence Day on August 24. He mentioned preparations for powerful initiatives aimed at enhancing Ukraine's position globally, with cooperation from EU partners and countries where bilateral relations have been lacking. Zelensky emphasized the intensive work being carried out by his team and assured that important news for Ukraine will be unveiled. He highlighted the focus on the military, including reports on the front line and the supply of weapons and ammunition. Zelensky also emphasized the need for weapons for soldiers and new support packages from international partners to enhance Ukraine's defense capabilities. Biden to sign strategic partnership deal with Vietnam in latest bid to counter China in the region. President Joe Biden is set to strengthen U.S. influence in the Indo-Pacific by signing a strategic partnership agreement with Vietnam during a state visit in mid-September. The deal aims to draw Vietnam closer to the U.S. and enhance bilateral collaboration, particularly in areas like semiconductor production and artificial intelligence. This move aligns with Biden's efforts to counter China's growing influence in the region and follow successful diplomatic initiatives to bolster U.S. presence in Asia, despite tensions between Vietnam and China over territorial disputes in the South China Sea. The agreement doesn't necessarily indicate Vietnam is shifting away from China. The deal is seen as a continuation of the improved relations between the U.S. and Vietnam since the establishment of diplomatic ties in 1995. It also reflects the pragmatic foreign policy approach of Vietnam, maintaining friendly non-alignment with both China and Russia. The move, however, could lead to criticism for Biden's values-based foreign policy, as Vietnam's human rights record has been deteriorating. Some observers argue that the deal might prioritize geopolitical considerations over human rights concerns. U.S. slams North Korea for using repression to build nuclear weapons. At the United Nations, the United States strongly criticized North Korean leader Kim Jong-un for using repression, cruelty, and totalitarian rule to develop nuclear weapons and ballistic missiles. The U.S. ambassador to the United Nations, Linda Thomas-Greenfield, highlighted the regime's denial of human rights and fundamental freedoms, which allows it to allocate resources towards its unlawful weapons programs without public objection. The Security Council, in its first public meeting on human rights abuses in North Korea since 2017, discussed the issue, China expressed opposition to the public meeting but did not attempt to block it. The UN Human Rights Chief mentioned decades of chronic human rights violations in North Korea, citing forced labor that supports the militarization of the country. North Korea did not directly address the meeting, but it criticized human rights in the United States and claimed that a U.S. soldier sought refuge in North Korea due to racism and abuse, a North Korean defector shared his experiences of forced labor and expressed that the government prioritizes power, nuclear weapons, and propaganda over the well-being of its citizens. France, U.S. relations grow tense over Niger coup. The United States and France have divergent approaches in responding to the recent ousting of Niger's president in July. France is refraining from diplomatic engagement with the junta and is supportive of a regional body's potential military intervention. On the other hand, the U.S. has dispatched an envoy to engage with the junta leadership, not officially labeling it a coup and seeking a negotiated path to restore democracy. France accuses the U.S. of empowering the junta through engagement, while the U.S. sees an opportunity for a negotiated solution. France's concern partly arises from the potential loss of its strategic foothold in the Sahel. Where other coups have forced French troop withdrawals, this situation underscores the differing interests of France and the U.S. in Niger and reveals the shifting balance of power in the region. The U.S. uses Niger for counterterrorism operations and may believe it has more leverage than France. The situation also reflects a broader pattern of tensions between the two nations on various issues, while both countries support the restoration of constitutional order in Niger, their approaches differ. France has a more cautious stance and emphasizes its experience with coups in neighboring countries. 
If Niger falls into chaos, it could impact regional stability, migration routes, and counterterrorism efforts. France's concern is also tied to its revamped Africa strategy and the rise of anti-French sentiment in West Africa, influenced by post-colonial grievances and failures to combat insurgency. The US and France maintain dialogue and coordination, but their differences on the situation in Niger highlight the complexities of international diplomacy, security interests, and regional stability. West Africa military chiefs ready to intervene after Niger coup. West African military leaders have indicated their readiness for a potential armed intervention in Niger following a coup that ousted President Mohamed Bazoum in July. The Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS, has prepared a standby force to restore democracy if negotiations with the coup leaders fail. While military chiefs are prepared to act, they emphasize the preference for dialogue and are considering a diplomatic mission to Niger to continue pursuing a peaceful resolution. This move is prompted by growing concerns over coups in the region, with Niger being the fourth West African nation to experience such an event since 2020. The Sahel region faces challenges from jihadist insurgencies tied to groups like Al-Qaeda and Islamic State. ECOWAS has previously intervened in crises, including civil wars in Liberia and Sierra Leone. However, potential intervention in Niger is viewed as politically and militarily risky, particularly for Nigeria, which is already dealing with domestic armed groups. Concerns over potential spillover effects from Niger's situation have been raised by leaders in Nigeria's northern regions. The coup leaders in Niger have warned against military strikes, threatened to charge Bazoum with treason, and indicated openness to talks. ECOWAS, along with countries like France, Germany, and the United States, has imposed sanctions on Niger in response to the coup. The situation underscores the complexity of regional dynamics, security interests, and the challenges of addressing political instability. Taiwan VP in eye of the storm as China drills to protest U.S. visit. Taiwan's vice president and leading candidate for the upcoming presidential election, William Lai, is facing increasing tensions with China after his visits to the United States triggered China's hostile response. Lai, who aims to maintain the status quo with China and has offered to engage in talks with Beijing, is viewed unfavorably by the Chinese government due to his past statements supporting Taiwan's independence. In 2017, Lai referred to himself as a worker for Taiwan's independence, crossing a red line for China. China perceives Lai as a separatist and a potential troublemaker who might attempt to change the status quo by pushing for the establishment of a Republic of Taiwan. Although Lai has pledged not to take such steps, Beijing remains wary of his intentions. China has increased military drills near Taiwan and held war games in response to Taiwanese engagement with the United States. Despite tensions, Lai has reiterated his commitment to maintaining peace, offering talks with China, and allowing the Taiwanese people to determine the island's future. While Lai's stance is aligned with President Tsai Ing-wen's approach, China remains skeptical and has demanded that Taiwan's government recognize the One China principle. This situation highlights the delicate balance Taiwan must navigate to uphold its autonomy while avoiding further escalation with China. US and UK condemn Turkish Cypriot attack on UN peacekeepers. The US, UK, and France have collectively condemned the attacks on United Nations peacekeepers and damage to UN vehicles by Turkish Cypriots within the buffer zone separating the divided sides of Cyprus. The three countries, as permanent members of the UN Security Council, expressed their serious concern about the unauthorized construction of a road leading into the UN-delineated buffer zone. Despite the UN presenting a proposal to address Turkish Cypriot concerns, these actions occurred. The European Union also condemned the assaults and called on Turkish Cypriots to respect the UN's mission in the buffer zone. The Turkish Cypriot administration is determined to proceed with the road construction, citing benefits for Turkish Cypriots. Cyprus has been divided since 1974, with the northern third occupied by Turkey. Zelensky signs law on selecting constitutional court judges. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has announced that he signed a law changing the process of selecting constitutional court judges. This change was necessary to fulfill the European Commission's requirements for Ukraine's path towards EU membership. The law aims to ensure a transparent, professional, and fair selection of judges for the constitutional court. Zelensky emphasized that this step brings Ukraine closer to starting negotiations with the European Union for accession. The move follows recommendations from G7 ambassadors in June and aligns with efforts to strengthen anti-corruption institutions and reform the judiciary. 
The law was adopted by the Ukrainian parliament on July 27 to meet the European Commission's criteria for Ukraine's EU accession. Taiwan Vice President Returns from Sensitive U.S. Stopover Taiwan Vice President William Lai has returned from his sensitive visit to the United States, which China has condemned. Lai's trip prompted concerns about potential Chinese military drills near Taiwan. China claims Taiwan as its territory and views Lai as a separatist. Taiwanese officials warn that China might use the visit to intimidate voters ahead of next year's presidential election. While in the U.S., Lai addressed the Taiwanese community and met with American Institute in Taiwan officials. Lai, a frontrunner for the presidency, emphasized maintaining the status quo and offering talks with Beijing. The visit has increased tensions between China and the U.S. In the region, Chinese and Russian naval ships conducted drills, while the U.S. Ronald Reagan aircraft carrier was off Taiwan's eastern coast. Taiwan's defense ministry emphasized sovereignty in response. China's defense minister promises to boost cooperation with Russian ally Belarus. Chinese defense minister Li Shangfu visited Belarus and expressed China's intention to enhance military cooperation with Russia's ally Li met with President Alexander Lukashenko in Minsk and discussed the implementation of important agreements and strengthening bilateral military ties. The exact details of the cooperation were not disclosed, but joint military exercises are planned for next year. The visit follows Li's trip to Russia. Belarus, where Russian tactical nuclear weapons are deployed, assures that China's military assistance won't target third countries. Belarusian forces haven't participated in the Ukraine conflict. China's visit is seen as a signal to the EU, the US, and Ukraine about its growing military interests and ties with Moscow and Minsk.